Hey, hey guys, today I am going to be talking about being an introvert and bring you some of my favorite products that I love to use. Let's jump in. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Donna, this is my wonderland. And if you are watching this and you are a subscriber, Thank you so much for getting us to 100 subscribers. I am so super stoked. And that is going to come up in this conversation today. Um, so if you don't know me, my name is Donna. This is my Wonderland. And I am so happy to have you here. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell um, and sticking around for some more videos on here. We do home fragrance and we do crafting and decluttering. Um, and I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about um, being an introvert and what that means to me. So if you have actually checked out my channel, you will see in my cover image that it says crafting and lifestyle of an introvert. And so I haven't really spoken much about being an introvert on this channel yet. So I thought I would do a little video on it. Um, also a little bit about who I am and what I like and what I don't like, I suppose. So um, a lot of people have a misconception about what being an introvert is and what being an extrovert is. And a lot of people think that extroverts are loud and abrasive and they're in your face and they're the life and soul of the party all the time and, and they just love loud and crowds and all of that jazz and then they think the introverts are the opposite of that that they're very quiet they're very um, maybe meek they um, like to be on their own and don't like it to be loud and just prefer quietness and to some extent it is true but there are people that um don't quite fall into those categories. So basically what an extrovert is and what an introvert is, an extrovert is somebody who gains their energy from being around a lot of people. So if they are around a lot of people and there's a lot of excitement going on, they can really be energized by that and they feed off of that energy and it gives them more energy and it makes them able to go for longer, for to um be somebody who can stay up really late and enjoy that and not have too much sleep and and that is how they live and that's how they get their energy. An introvert on the opposite end of the spectrum finds that being in a crowd really drains their energy and finds that actually they need time away. And it was actually um, Sue Bryce, who is a photographer, who brought this to my attention and made me realise that I'm an introvert. So she said that she's an introvert and basically however much time she spends in uh, with people um, and this doesn't have to be crowds. This can just be sort of, you know, teaching. She She's a photographer who teaches. So, you know, teaching a class, um, being around people in general really drains her energy. So however much time she spends with people, she needs to spend equally amount of time on her own. And I was like, oh my God, that's me. I find it really difficult and really draining to be around people. And that's not their fault. It's just the way I work. Um, my batteries get depleted really easily when I am outside around people. And I'd never really looked at it like that. So I've just, just like learned that that is how I am. Um, but with that, a lot of people think, I'm not an introvert. When I talk to them, when I tell them that I'm an introvert, they go, oh, I would never expect that of you because I'm quite vocal. Um, and once I'm, I'm quite a shy person around new people, but once I've got to know people, I can be that louder personality in a group. Um, I'm quite happy to chat to people. Um, people have referred to me as bubbly before. Um, and I can, you know, talk to people and enjoy that interaction. So they assume that I'm an extrovert. And the thing is, is as I do do that, I am very good at portraying that. And I like to give out that energy and I like to engage with people and I like to have that conversation with people, but it drains me. And I then have to like, like next weekend, we've got a weekend where we're going out on Saturday um, to a friend's house 
um, for a birthday and then we are going out on the Sunday for another friend's birthday and so that's like a full-on weekend and I'm sitting there thinking oh gosh I shouldn't have done that shouldn't shouldn't be it just is the way it is but I now know that the following weekend I've got a plan to do nothing and go nowhere and see no one so that I can just have that downtime um, and replenish because that's what it does to me whereas my partner he's very quiet he's not a big talker he will not sort of go into the room and and start you know talking to anybody and having a conversation with anybody but he's an extrovert he really enjoys being part of the crowd he enjoys listening to other people he enjoys being around a lot of people he gets a lot of energy from that and he that's where he thrives so we are completely opposites and I always say that I am an introverted extrovert and he's an extroverted introvert um so that's just how it is with us um so you now might be thinking about yourself and how you act um around people versus how you are when you're not around people and how that might actually what people think you are might not actually be what you are so I have now learned that I need to have that downtime but the other thing that I've realized is I also um, have been somebody who has had to deal with depression since I was 16 and anxiety since I was 34-ish. So I have dealt with those two issues for a long time. And what my anxiety does is it it is starting to affect my ability to leave my house. Um, I have let friends down, told friends that I can't meet up, um, changed plans because of my anxiety about going out and being around people. Um, And that is slightly different to the introversion. So it's important to keep that separate from that because an introvert isn't afraid to go out and meet people, doesn't have anxiety around that. It's just draining for them. So I have that, but I also on top of that have my anxiety, which can really hinder my ability to go out and enjoy life really um I do force myself to do some things so that I can keep going out there because I do I want to see our friends and I want to go out because I enjoy myself once I'm out but it's just that initial issue of getting over the hurdle of actually getting out of the house that can be a struggle for me which is one of the reasons that I absolutely love that I am building this little community on YouTube because it means that I can talk to people and I can um, enjoy your company in the comments and um, things like that but it's not a drain on my energy because I'm here on my own I'm basically talking to myself um, and that that doesn't deplete my energy in the same way it would if we were all in one room together having conversations it would wipe me out in no time so that's why I am loving this YouTube journey I am on um that is how I see introversion and extroversion and how it shows up in my life um and yeah a little bit of my anxiety in there as well um so I am absolutely fine with going into discussions about my depression and anxiety so if that is something you want to know more about or you want to hear more of my story there I'm happy to discuss it I'm somebody who doesn't shy away from sharing that information because um when I was first diagnosed it was it was a very dangerous situation for me and it put me in a very dangerous situation and an uncomfortable position and started off the worst five years of my life and I hope that now it is better for anybody who is um going to their doctor and explaining how they're feeling and that there is more um help Um, but I fear that it's not. So sometimes it is just good to hear somebody else's story and um, know that you're not alone. So um, definitely if you are um, somebody who relates to anything that I have said so far today, then please put a heart in the comments, any colour you like, um, and uh, I will give you a heart back. because it it is difficult, it's hard to go through, it's hard to watch other people going through it, Um, 
And we just all need to be a little kinder to each other and kinder to ourselves, give ourselves a little compassion because I know that sometimes um, people who are suffering tend to beat up on themselves and think like, why can't I just get over this? And it's it's just not that easy. It's just not that easy. Um, but I went into two, um, oh, I wanted to also um, bring in a little bit of my, um, personal stuff not personal stuff but I wanted to talk to you about a little sort of journey that I've been on in the last few years probably the last well since the pandemic hit really where um I'm just changing some things up in my life and I wanted to share that with you because um I think it is important that we all kind of take a look at these things um, and see what we're doing in our lives and how it's showing up in our lives. Um, so I wanted to bring that to you and it's a little bit lighter than the heavy stuff that we started with. So um, for me, um, I have been on a journey where I am trying to look at what I am doing to our planet um, and how I can limit the damage that I am causing while I am here. It is difficult because I'm in a household where other people are thinking that whole, you know, I'm just one person. What I do doesn't matter. So sod it. Um, I don't have that belief system, so it can be difficult. Um, but I wanted to um, talk about that and also the self-care aspect that I've been going through the last couple of years where I feel like part of um, being in depression and feeling anxiety is a lot of self-care kind of goes out the window. Um, so I got into a place um, with my depression a couple of years ago, just over a couple of years ago, where it was getting pretty bad um, to the point where um, I wasn't taking care of myself. I was going out, I was going to work. And I think I mentioned this in a previous video, you know, I would get up, I would do what I was expected to do. Um, I would come home and, and that was it. And I wasn't taking care of myself to the point where showering was like optional, not really bothered about it. Um, I could put my hair up in a ponytail. So that didn't really matter. And just not really taking the time to care for myself I'd had no skincare routine at all um I would wash my face with water teeth brushing was optional it was just getting really bad and I think a lot of people um not not necessarily that they get as bad as I did at all um but a lot of people that are going through depression it is that sort of self-care that starts to slip because you're thinking what's the point and that was where I was when the pandemic hit. What's the point? And even more so then, I'm not leaving the house. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not seeing anybody. So what's the point? Um, and it was hard for me, but I turned 40 in 2021. And so in 2020, when we were going through the pandemic and we had that time where we were all at home and couldn't go anywhere I really started to think about who I am and what I was doing and where I was happy and how I could do best for my body because I knew that I was kind of abusing it not only in the hygiene realms but also in the food you know I had let my weight slip I had got to a place in 2015 where I was really happy with my weight and um but I just wanted to lose these last seven pounds and I couldn't shift them. And because I couldn't seem to get those shifted, I couldn't be happy where I was to the point where I just gave up and the weight crept back on. So um, I was in a position where I was like angry at myself that I'd let myself lose the achievement that I'd had. I was angry at myself because of the depression and I was just all out beating up on myself. I was being really mean to myself, if I'm honest. And 2020 was really an eye-opening time for me where I was just like, okay, what can I do um, to to change this? What do what do I want to do 
with my life? What do I want to do in this world? How do I want to show up? And so part of that was the eco stuff. So so some of the changes that I have made is moving over to uh, more eco-friendly um, dishwasher tablets and washing machine um, pods. So I use a company called Small S M O L. I will link them in the description below. Um, and if I can find like a refer a friend code or anything like that that gives you something off, I will go and find that and pop that below for you so you can try them. And um, they do trials for like a pound, um, which is really really good. Where they'll give you a set of um, tablets for you to use. But their packaging is all cardboard and it can go through your post box, so you don't have to wait for a delivery. You put it on subscription, and it's is it really good I love the products um I use the dishwasher tablets and I use the laundry liquid which comes in the little pod capsules um and all of the packaging is recyclable it's all cardboard and it is made in a way that means that children can't get into it so it's got this little tab system um where you have to kind of tear off bits of cardboard and then push these little tabs in to be able to push the things out so it's safe around children as well which I think is absolutely amazing they also do um counter cleans and things like that but I haven't tried those yet um so I can't really speak to those but the dishwasher tablets and the laundry tablets are really good I use um both the bio and the non-bio option for the laundry liquid so um I can speak to both of those and I really enjoy them so that was one of the first things I did. Now, I did used to use um, Indian soap nuts for my washing, um, but I just found that they weren't quite giving me that real clean feeling that I wanted. Um, it was great because I could fragrance it with essential oils that I wanted, but I just was finding that it wasn't quite doing the job properly. And it's probably because I overloaded my machine. I put too much in because I don't like to do a half load. So that's probably why that didn't work so well, but I did enjoy using them. Um, and a bag would last me forever. Um, so they're really good because they're reusable. You can reuse them up to like five or six times or something and you get a big sort of kilo bag and you use five nuts in a wash. So it, that, that's a really good option as well if you wanted that. The next thing that I did was I wanted to, to find a deodorant that I could get on board with, with it not being an aerosol and being something that was more eco-friendly. So what I did was I looked up um, a company called Nude. It's N-W-D, I think. I will link them in the description below as well. And I started using them. It's a bamboo um, tube that looks like a toothpaste tube. It's probably about three inches tall. Um, it lasts quite well. You only need a pea size amount and you put it on and then you're good for like three days, even if you shower. I mean, I would always just put it on after I showered. But um, I found it really good, except for the application process, because it's in a tube like toothpaste, you kind of squeeze, I would squeeze it onto my knuckle and then rub my knuckle under. They do have a little applicator now that you can put on it that's like, um, you know, the lip glosses that you used to get, the little ball on top of the little hole. And so you could put the lip gloss on. It's it's like that. You can just screw that onto the top and obviously reuse that. Um, but it's not fragranced. And I was missing the fragrance. Um, so, and I didn't want to then buy a body spray to spray over my eco-friendly. Yeah, that didn't make sense to me. So I was looking for an alternative and I found it. Um, and I found it on YouTube. Actually, it was something, a product that one of the people that I watch on YouTube had uh, had a sponsored video by this one is not sponsored this is all just the stuff that I really enjoy um so this is the wild applicator so I'm just going to put it together for you show you my case so this is the life my nails I chose the right color so this is my um case it's aluminium it's quite sturdy it's got wild written on the beginning on the front there and then you've got these two buttons on the side you take the lid off and what you do is you twist this here to bring your deodorant up and then 
when you want to change it, you have to then screw it all the way down to the bottom. So until it won't screw anymore. So that won't screw anymore. Then you can push the buttons on the side and pull the bottom part out. So I've actually just taken mine out. So you can see there it's got this little um, area platform for the deodorant to sit on. Now the deodorant comes in cardboard um, and I've actually got some new ones here. So I'm just going to open this. Okay, so I have got three refills here that I bought and they come like this. So they're just in, this is cardboard, so biodegradable cardboard and it's got a little lid on it for you um, and it tells you what to do on the top there. So I have wound my case down. Now the one that's in there has actually still got quite a bit, ooh, quite a bit on it. So I pushed it up with my finger and then I could actually get it out of the top there. And you can see there's still quite a bit on there. So what I did was I was kind of balancing it. I don't like to waste. So I kind of pushed it up so that the deodorant part was showing above the cardboard, but the cardboard was still in there and then pinched at the top here to hold it in. And then I can still rub that under my arm so I can use that last little bit. But I will show you this new one now. Is it? Oh, there yeah, it has. So I got Raspberry Ripple because that's the new limited edition. So I will link this below. So if you want it, you can go and grab it while it's there. Mint and Aloe. And then another, um, oh no, I didn't. I thought I got um, Cotton and Sea Salt, which was the one that I got originally. But I didn't. I got Jasmine and Mandarin Blossom. So I'm going to have a little sniff with you guys here. This is like wax sniffing, isn't it? Deodorant sniffing. So this is the Mint and Aloe. Oh, that's nice. That's a really nice, fresh scent. The mint isn't overpowering, um, but it's just really beautiful. So very much like the sea salt and cotton. It's just a beautiful, fresh scent. Oh, I like that. Now I don't know which one to put in. Um, the Raspberry Ripple, which I just got. I love Raspberry Ripple. Yeah, sweet, sweet. But again, not overpowering. So it's not like people aren't going to think that you've just put ice cream under your armpits. That's really nice. And then the Jasmine and Mandarin. Ooh, that's nice. So that's a bit more powerful. That's a bit more potent. Um, really nice scent. Loving that. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to put one of them. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to put the jasmine and mandarin blossom in. So what you would do is on the bottom there is the little indent for you to be able to put it on to there. I will say that if you push it up too far, um, it can stick to the lid. So if you look in there, you can see the muck where I've left it stuck up. So I always um, wind it back down just a couple of turns once I've used it. So you pop that in there and then you put your wild top case over the top, squeezing your buttons and there it is at the top there. So then you just start to wind. Oh, um, I locked it in. Make sure your buttons are locked in. And then you can start to wind it. And it starts to push up the deodorant. So there you go. That is the wild deodorant. I really like it. Like I say, I have done it where I have left it too far to the top and then when I've pulled it out it's pulled it out of the hole so you just push push it back in but if you just rewind it after you've used it just so that it is down a little bit that will help I'm going to use the lid from that one just to put over my old one just to keep it clean whilst I finish that off um, and they last really well so I was putting obviously this one isn't one that you put on for three days and leave it um, this is a daily deodorant so I've been using it pretty much every day 
um, since I got mine in March sometime and it's just run out now for me to refill it but there's still some in there um, so that's lasted me three months so actually these refills should last me the rest of the year and I think they are like six pounds each so for three three months worth of deodorant and a little bit more so I think that's a really good deal um, so I have got the ability for you to get 50% off your first order I think Again, not sponsored, it's just my refer a friend kind of code. Um, so you can use that and get 50% off your first order. Um, and then the final thing that I wanted to share with you was my skincare. So one of the things that I um, wanted to do, like I said, was improve my self-care. So I got back into the routine of having a regular shower and washing my hair and brushing my teeth um, my dentist is very pleased with my teeth which I think I said in a video um, not long ago that I'd been to the dentist um, flossing and doing all that good jazz kind of back to myself there and making it a priority in making it something that's special for me it's not just oh, this is what people do on a daily basis. This is, no, this is me caring for myself and taking the time. And I think when you are somebody who um, has been through um, or is going through depression, those little changes of mindset where it's like, no, this isn't just something everybody does. This is something you're doing to care for yourself and to make yourself feel good. Because I don't know about you, but when I wash my hair and it's clean, I feel so much better. It, it really is something that makes me feel good. So that is what this is all about to me. It's not just the hygiene aspect. It's doing something for myself. Um, so skincare was really important to me once upon a time. And it had just kind of gone out the window. But for me, I did, I've did. i got the window open, guys. So if you can hear the cars in the background, I apologise. But it is Saturday. It is sunny and people are travelling. But I need the window open because it's so damn hot. Um, so I started to use, um, a skincare brand, um, which I will talk about. And I just wanted to try and find a company that was, um, being eco-conscious like I was. Um, and I found a couple of brands that I liked. One of them's a little bit more high end and a bit out of my budget at the moment. So I went for the one that was more budget friendly to me. Um, but I didn't want to just go and buy off the high street. I didn't want loads of plastic bottles in my house. You know, I've said before um, that I use a bar shampoo and a bar conditioner, which I will also link below for you. Um, and I also use a, a soap bar for my shower now um, because I've run out of all of the Christmas gifts that people buy. Um, so I bought a bar soap as well. So I use that for my skin, so uh, for showering and I didn't want to then like have loads of plastic bottles of, uh, skincare in my bathroom. So I'm going to pop and get my skincare and I'll be back and I'll show you. So I have two cousins, both of them work for different skincare companies. One of them works for the body shop at home and one of them works for Tropic. And I decided to give the Tropic skincare a go because I really liked on her on my cousin's website what they were saying about the recycling aspect. So you can actually send your plastic bottles back and they will reuse them, um, which I think is fantastic. And I think if you send them five back, you get something in return. I can't remember what it is. I can actually, I could look it up, can I? Hold on. Okay, so what it says on the website is we pledge to update and evolve in the most powerful, purposeful, planet protective way possible to make sure we are always treating you to luxury beauty products and treating the earth with care and attention it deserves. And it says double offsetting our emissions, responsibly sourced ingredients, recyclable and refillable packaging, cruelty free and vegan, every purchase funds education. So that to me was powerful because you know and I haven't had long to sort of research company I just wanted to get started with a skincare company so I may change down the line but I can give you my um view on the products that I use um so 100% uh, 
of our core scheme care range is now refillable, recyclable or returnable as part of our rewards scheme. So that's what they have a rewards scheme. So let me talk to you about my skincare. So I use the Tropic Smoothing Cleanser. And it says massage two to four pumps into dry skin over your eyes and face and neck twice daily. If you're wearing makeup, rinse off with warm water, reapply another one or two pumps. Finally, release, finally rinse with your bamboo cloth in warm water and wipe away the excess. So that is the cleanser. I really like it. It has a nice fragrance to it. Just a kind of a clean fragrance. It's nothing too overpowering or anything like that. Then I use the vitamin toner. So spritz daily onto freshly cleansed skin and leave to sink in. So what I do, and this is what my cousin recommended, was I cleanse, then I spray with my toner, then I brush my teeth to allow that toner to dry naturally without any help. And then I do the Skin Feast Nourishing Cream Concentrate afterwards. So this says one to three pumps daily onto your face and neck in an upward circular motion. So that is what I use in the evening. So these are the three bottles. I don't know about the spray bottle. I think that's probably a regular bottle. I haven't checked. But this bottle, if I unscrew the top, so it's got this pump action lid, but when you pull it up, there is no, there's no stick. So it moves up inside and all the product just kind of moves up with it, but it's solid on the bottom. So you can't see that it's doing that. So that really confused me. I thought it was broken when I opened it. I was just like, oh, the, the, the thing's come off. That's why I can't get any more out. So that is the skincare that I use. I'm really happy with it. It gives me a very glowy, dewy look, which I am happy with at my age. Glowy and dewy is what I'm going for. I don't like the matte dry look. So that works well for me. So those are the products I am loving because of the eco-friendliness of them and the and what they do for me and how they work as well as the laundry and um, dishwasher stuff. So I will link all of that stuff below. Um, what I will say is that if you are struggling, try and do something nice for yourself. Just be kind to yourself and uh, give yourself a little bit of grace because we have been through some rough times. People are still going through rough times prices increasing all over the place is crazy but you can take these little things things like just washing your face in the morning or just having a shower and you can make that just some time for yourself um, to pamper yourself and to make yourself feel good so that is it from me this week guys thank you so much for watching um, please do hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you want to watch more videos I usually do home fragrance crafting and decluttering um, but I wanted to bring a bit of personal thing to you and show you what I am using and how I am trying to manage my anxiety and depression um, and my introvertedness and I will see you guys in the next one. Um, thank you so much. Please hit that thumbs up button on your way out and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.